In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create dimensions in the software. We're going to start with this file, which was drawn in a different tutorial called the Vectric widget. Now, we'll link that in the related videos down below in the tutorial browser. And then we're going to end up with something like you can see on screen here. Now, it's worth noting that the level of dimensioning in the software is not intended to replace a full drafting program, but it is more of a tool which can add value to your vectors to give you a quick overview and oversight of all the sizes before cutting on a CNC machine. So let's start by opening a new copy of the software. And the first thing we're going to do is open an existing file. So if we navigate our tutorials folders, and we go to the dimensioning quick guide files, we should find the widget underscore vector.crv file. Select that and click open, and that should then load us the vector widget which we created in that previous tutorial. So now we have our vectors to work with, let's go and find the dimensioning tool. So we'll find that underneath the create vectors section of the drawing tab, and it's this icon here, the dimensions, add dimensions to the 2D drawing. So click on that and that will then open the dimensions form. As you'll see we have various different dimensions that we can get so we've got all of these options here. Now we'll go through these uh, bit by bit in just a moment. We also then can specify different types of fonts that we want to use, so any of the Windows system fonts or any of the single line fonts that come with the software. We can edit the parameters here and then we have the option then to either place them on the existing uh, selected layer or create them on a brand new layer. So to begin with it's always good to test out the settings that we've got with the font sizes and type. So we're just going to use the length dimension and all I'm going to do is click twice in the 2D view. So I'm just going to click once here, once here and then I can drag out the dimension in either direction. Now when I feel like I'm in a place where I'd like it around here, we also then have the option to select whereabouts the text appears on the line. Now it will snap to the center, as you notice there, but then you can move it in either direction. I'm just going to do it to the center to start with, and that's the dimension in between these two points. Now let's imagine that I don't actually need four decimal places. To edit this existing dimension, all I need to do is hold shift, select it and when it's highlighted in pink I can now go ahead and modify this. So I may want to for instance change the font type. So I may want Arial so I can just type that in when I've got the drop down I can hit enter and that will then change that font to Arial for me. I can also change the text size so I may want to change that to 0.15 now you'll notice that then shrank the uh, text height for me and then I can also select how many decimal places I have here as well. So I want three. I think three is a good number. If you have a jog wheel on your mouse, whilst in the uh, text box itself, you can scroll the jog wheel and that will then increase or decrease the amount of decimal places as well. The next thing is the offset. Now this is the offset from the points where you originally selected. Now you'll see the black node which has come up when I hover near the ends of each of these dimensions. Now that's the original point that I selected to measure from the offset is when the actual uh, measurement starts from that point. So at the moment you'll see it's point 0.1 of an inch away from that node. So if I increase that, you'll see that's now quite a bit away from the original selection. Now this is all to do with it, uh, just not getting in the way of your drawing. So just to make it that a little bit tidier. I am actually going to stick with point 0.1 as that's quite nice that way. And the last thing to note before we do move on to actually using the dimensions to measure the points on this vector widget is that if you uh, feel the need to, you can add custom text which will replace the measurement that's displayed here. So if I just check that checkbox there, I can then type in whatever I wish. So I can just type in demo and that will then replace that uh, measurement that was there with the word demo. I'm actually going to use the measurements for this. So I can then go ahead and press Control Z which is going to then undo that dimension and then I can go ahead now and create the dimensions that I actually want to keep. So let's start by actually creating a length dimension. Now as you've seen when I demonstrated it to begin with you can measure in any angle or direction that you wish. So let's say if I wanted to measure the length between these two center points of these holes I can simply click the center point of each of these, drag out my box place my text wherever I wish to on the line and then simply click and that will give you the measurement there and the dimension. 
Now, as I say, if this offset uh, on this dimension is not specific enough, that it's from the center points of those, we can simply hold shift to edit it, change the offset to zero, and you'll now see that it now extends into the center point of those holes. The next dimension we're going to take a look at is this vertical dimension. So this will measure the vertical height between any two selected points on the drawing. So I'm just going to go over and I'm just going to snap to this node here and I'm going to snap to this bottom node here and then I can go up and then place the text wherever I wish. So I'm going to do it halfway which is about there and you'll see that's now 7 inches between this point and this point here. Next in our available dimensions is the horizontal dimension so simply click on the text to activate the horizontal dimension and then simply select two points on the drawing. So we, we may need to measure from this point here to this point here. Let's just scroll down, place that there, so it's three and a half inches between them. But these points don't actually have to be aligned together, so they can be from here, and I may want to measure the actual horizontal dimension between those two points, and then I can just drag that down to wherever I feel, and that'll then give the horizontal dimension between these two lines here. The next dimension that we have is the angle dimension. Now this takes three points, so I may want to start it here. I'll click another one here, and I can pull it out to here. The next thing I want to know is whether I am measuring the internal or external angle of those points. I want to measure this angle here, and then we can go ahead and choose where we want to place our text. Now this you can extend or you can have it follow around the circumference like so. So I may want to just have it there like so. So that tells us that that angle is 38 degrees. And the last dimension to demonstrate to you is the arc dimension. So simply select that from your list of options and then simply go ahead and choose any uh, arc. And you'll notice that then it will highlight that in pink and it'll allow you to then drag out the dimension for you. So that would be half an inch on the radius there. And we can choose this one here. Now what about if we wanted it to be the diameter? So I can change that so I can hold shift, select and then just check the box here to show diameter. So that will then change this di dimension here to be diameter. It's all down to your personal preference. So again we can just click here, choose that and if I don't like the fact that it says diameter, I can simply just uncheck the box there and it will change automatically to the radius dimension. Again, if we needed to, we could change any of these dimensions to use a custom text. Now I'm going to place these all on uh, a new layer called dimensions, so that's already in place. The checkbox is checked. All I need to do now is press close and those dimensions will all be on a layer called dimensions, as you can see when I turn off layer 1. The last thing to do now will be to save our work. Now I'm going to save this as a different copy, so I'm going to save as, and in the tutorials folder I'm just going to call this widget underscore dimensions, like so. And that's it for this quick guide on the dimensions within the software. If you are interested in how we created the Vectric widget, that will be linked in the related videos below. And thanks for watching.